We're very happy to be joined by Galen McNamara, CEO of Suma Silver. Hey, Galen, how's it going? Hi, Dwayne. I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me on again. How are you? Good, good. Great to have you join us. Galen, your team's been spending a lot of time lately analyzing historical project data and doing geological modeling on both your projects. Can you give us a quick summary of what all this work is telling you about the property's potential and how it helps you to prepare for the upcoming drill campaign? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think the important thing to think about here is when we're working in these old places that were famous mining camps back 100 years ago, uh, we need to stand on the shoulders of the people that worked on this before us and, and really use the work they did to shortcut us to finding new zones of mineralization. And look, you know, there's this old saying in mining, the best place to find a new mine is right next to an old mine. And we're just really doubling down on that strategy in that we can take all these maps, hundreds of them, maybe a thousand of them, put them into, uh, you know, into the computer space in the digital world, and we can parse down large amounts of data to make a really efficient decision, you know, and, and really maximize uh, the work that they have done in the past. So we can be as efficient with our exploration dollars as is really humanly possible and, and get that discovery uh, per ounce cost down uh, as much as possible. So is this type of intensive historical data analysis and modeling typical or is it the future of smart mining? You know what? It's becoming more and more common. I mean, we're really, uh, really strong on it. It's something that I and the team feels very strongly about. Um, but but really, it's not something that's been done uh, as much in the past. But again, with with successes like ours and, and many other companies, um, I think a lot of people now are becoming uh, in tune to the fact that, you know, you have to use as much of the information from the past as you can. And, you know, even now you hear about things like, you know, AI and exploration and using AI to help us make discoveries. Well, you know, I, I think that's a great tool, but me personally, I'm not into artificial intelligence. I'm into human intelligence. But what it comes down to is, is, is uh, instead of having a thousand, say a thousand maps to sort through and try to make decisions, you know, you can parse it all down, uh, put it into the digital space, uh, and then it's like a light bulb goes off and it becomes relatively easier. So take us through non-drilling related data you like to see before picking up drill targets. Yeah, so this is a good one, right? It's it's really easy for anyone to go out into the desert or wherever they're working, kind of like check which way is the wind blowing and then say, okay, let's drill here. But I think what you know exploration people like to do is that we need to have as many uh, aces up our sleeve as as humanly possible. So, you know, we say we use the underground mining maps from 100 years ago to help us uh, hone in. But we also go out and we we look at the rocks on surface and, and use signs. We read the tea leaves, really, that those rocks tell us um, to help us target drill holes. But also, you know, we'll go out and we'll sample um, all of the soils uh, in a grid pattern around some of the targets. And if we see any uh, what we call pathfinder elements that are enriched, such as things like, you know, arsenic, mercury, but also, of course, gold and silver, you know, that helps build the story to, to test a target. And then one other, another example is, is geophysics, um, and, and not to get too far into the weeds here, but we can run electric currents into the earth and measure how they reflect back to us. And that tells us a lot about what's underneath the surface too. So if you have, you know, one plus one plus one, you know, instead of that equaling three, hopefully you can make it equal five and make a discovery. Galen, do you plan to continue staking new claims or do you think your current land packages leave you more than enough exploration upside? You know, I think honestly on both of these land packages, I can see a path to 100 million ounces of silver on each of them. So with that in mind, yeah, it's, it's more than enough and then some. But, but hey, you know, like we're commercial. We're always looking for new opportunities. And if you know, I, I have an idea or someone on the team has an idea that, you know, we might want to get more, you know, we, and it's a good idea. Yeah, you know, we're not going to be afraid to act decisively and quickly and do it. Have there been any recent exploration results from other operators that you think have implications for your targets? Yeah, that's a really timely question, Dwayne, because you know, on our project in Nevada called Hughes, uh, our next door neighbor at Black Rock Silver, um, they've been having some great success on on their side of the project, uh, and they just put out a hundred million ounce silver equivalent resource um, very recently. So that's caused me to really, you know, rethink what could be on our side of the ground in Tonopah and on that in that area. And I already know that there's, we already know that there's a a, a many mineralized high grade zones that are fully open to expansion that really require follow up in the coming months. 
So based on the most recent geological data you're seeing, does Nevada or New Mexico hold the most promise this year? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a question that we get all the time. And, you know, hey, like, I, I don't want one or the other. I want it all, right? So I, I honestly, you know, both projects have that potential for 100 million ounces, um, which both would be very valuable. And really, it only sometimes in these situations, it only takes one drill to change your thinking of, you know, which way that goes. But I think both projects demand you know, significant follow-up, significant exploration to, to start to prove up the ounces there and show a path, you know, to what I think will be very significant deposits. Galen, when do you think you can talk about the recent Ruby step out? Yeah, so we're, that's, that's a, a, another good question. We have one hole pending, uh, waiting for the results on that. It hit some interesting veins that appear to be mineralized to us. So uh, we are waiting on results for that sometime in the next three or four weeks. So what's next for SUMA? What should investors be watching for? Yeah, well, well, for us, we're in a good position. We're very well financed with $7 million in working camp. So, I mean, that really what I like to say, the analogy I like to use is that we've got a good war chest to go out uh, and really start building out, continue to build out answers on both of these projects over the coming year or so, uh, which is uh, something that the team is very much looking forward to. So for us, we're about... Uh, you know, exploration and drill, 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 um, very drill results focused company. Uh, and that's not going to change um, in the next little while. All right. So you've definitely given us a great background on SUMA and then also what investors can expect for the next coming quarter. So we definitely appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. Of course, Dwayne. Thanks for having me on. And I'm always glad to give uh, anyone an update.